Aurora Lee by Elizabeth Browning First book Of writing many books there is no end and I who have written much in prose and verse for others' uses will write now for mine will write my story for my better self as when you paint your portrait for a friend who keeps it in a drawer and looks at it long after he has ceased to love you, just to hold together what he was and is. I, writing thus, am still what men call young. I have not so far left the coasts of life to travel inland that I cannot hear that murmur of the outer infinite which unweaned babies smile at in their sleep when wondered at for smiling. Not so far, but still I catch my mother at her post beside the nursery door with finger up, hush, hush, here's too much noise, while her sweet eyes leap forward, taking part against her word in the child's riot. Still I sit and feel my father's slow hand when she had left us both, stroke out my childish curls across his knee, and hear a sunter's daily jest, she knew he liked it better than a better jest, inquire how many golden scoody went to make such ringlets. Oh, my father's hand, stroke the poor hair down, stroke it heavily, draw, press the child's head closer to thy knee, I'm still too young, too young to sit alone. I write. My mother was a Florentine whose rare blue eyes were shut from seeing me when scarcely I was four years old, my life a poor spark snatched up from a failing lamp, which went out, therefore. She was weak and frail. She could not bear the joy of giving life, the mother's rapture slew her. If her kiss had left a longer weight upon my lips, it might have steadied the uneasy breath and reconciled and fraternised my soul with the new order. As it was indeed, I felt a mother want about the world and still went seeking like a bleating lamb left out at night in shutting up the fold as restless as a nest-deserted bird, grown chill through something being away, through what it knows not, I, Aurora Lee, was born to make my father sadder and myself. Not overjoyous, truly. Women know the way to rear up children, to be just. They know a simple, merry, tender knack of tying sashes, fitting baby shoes, and stringing pretty words that make no sense, and kissing full sense into empty words. Which things are corals to cut life upon, although such trifles children learn by such. Love's holy earnest in a pretty play, and get not over early solemnized, but seeing as in a rose bush, love's divine which burns and hurts not, not a single bloom. Become aware and unafraid of love. Such good do mothers. Fathers love as well, mine did I know, but still with heavier brains and wills more consciously responsible and not as wisely since less foolishly. So mothers have God's license to be missed. My father was an austere Englishman who, after a dry lifetime spent at home in college learning, law and parish talk, was flooded with a passion unaware. His whole provisioned and complacent past drowned out from him that moment as he stood in Florence, where he had come to spend a month and note the secret of da Vinci's drains, he musing somewhat 
absently perhaps some English question whether men should pay the unpopular but necessary tax with left or right hand. In the alien sun, in that great square of the Santissima, there drifted past him, scarcely marked enough to move his comfortable island scorn, a train of priestly banners, cross and psalm, the white-veiled, rose-crowned maidens holding up tall tapers weighty for such wrists, a slant to the blue luminous tremor of the air, and letting drop the white wax as they went to eat the bishop's wafer at the church, from which long trail of chanting priests and girls a face flashed like a symbol on his face, and shook with silent clangor brain and heart, transfiguring him to music. Thus, even thus, he too received his sacramental gift with Eucharistic meanings, for he loved. And thus, beloved, she died. I have heard it said that but to see him in the first surprise of widower and father nursing me, unmothered little child of four years old, his large man's hands afraid to touch my curls as if the gold would tarnish, his grave lips contriving such a miserable smile as if he knew needs must or I should die. And yet twas hard, would almost make the stones cry out for pity. There's a verse he set in Santa Croce to her memory. Weep for an infant too young to weep much when death removed this mother.' 